Hello all, welcome back to Uncommon Geeks. Myself Fasant. I hope you all doing well. So today's topic is, as you already know, we are continuing with the promises, and this video also we are going to discuss about promises. Some important aspects of promise I'll be discussing. This is not mainly on a Q and A kind of a video. Oh, definitely there are good. Con- I'll be asking some questions and I'll be also be answering. But it's more like question and the concept explanation both. I'll try to give you a scenario, and in that scenario, what concept you has to be used. So it's up to preparation for interview only. But I'll also touch base a little bit about the different concepts. Okay. If you have not watched my previous videos about the promise, I'll try to link somewhere on the screen and also in the description section. Please go ahead and watch it. If you not watch those and suddenly landed in this video, then it may be slightly difficult for you to understand digest everything. Okay. Without wasting further time, let's get started. See, I'm starting from the same uh, same block wherever we we um, uh, we stopped in the last video. Okay, and continuing from there itself. So we have three promises, and we have output of the three promises added, and we are showing the output. And if it goes to error, we are showing the error. Now, very first question here is. You know, in every every website or a mobile application, whenever the API calls are happening, we kind of show loaders on the screen, correct? As spinners, what we call. So until a API call is successful or it becomes failure, we continue to show the loader. My question here is, which is the right place to start showing the loader, and which is the right place to stop stop showing the loader? So the implementation of how you use the loader could vary across React JS, Vue JS, React Native, or any other JavaScript framework. Like how do you bind that variable to a loader, etc. But the fundamental concept remains same, and everywhere you will have a similar way of invoking the promises. Okay, when there are more than one, etc. What most people would do is they will have a let's show loader, and they'll set it to true. Okay. And what they do after the promise is resolved, they'll set it to false. They would do the same. In the catch block also, okay. This is a typical implementation of show loader by most of the engineers. And whatever the code review I have done, everywhere I do see this. So this is fine. It absolutely works well. But the question here is, we this line cannot be avoided because somewhere it has it should start, and we should set it to true. But this line number thirty five and thirty nine, we have a same code, correct? So. Very first thing as a developer, what come to should come to your mind is any block you are using more than once. Is there a way to remove from the both the places and put it in a function, or is some utility file anything? See, the hundred percent we cannot do that. There will be sometimes we can we have to rewrite the code, but there are many times where we can avoid this. So we can easily avoid this by a small concept of graduation. Most of you might have studied try catch, and you might have also studied finally. And on a day-to-day practice, we'll miss out finally. So rather keeping the code in both try and catch, you can easily put this code in finally, right? What we have to do is when whether whether API call is successful or a failure, finally we cannot show the loader, correct? Whatever on the failure, like you have to show error state that you do here. If you have to show data, you do that here. But loader, you have to stop try catch whatever happens. So that is something that can be easily achieved via finally. Why interviewer would ask this question is very first to understand your knowledge of exception handling. Do you still just know try catch or you know anything else also? Number one. Second, how you are how hard you are trying to avoid repetition of code. Okay. So these are these these are not the theoretical skills. These are the practical skills. Only if you are done on a day-to-day basis coding in a particular concept, you will be able to answer this. Okay. Now this is about the question number one. Question number two. See here, three awaits we are doing for three promises, correct? And this execution is sequential. After one, we are going to two, then we are going to three. Okay? Let's take a practical example of a website, of a e-commerce website. So first, they'll show the banner where some things will be sliding. Second, we will have a recommendations. Our recommendation depending on our past purchase history. Then we'll have a third block where they'll be showing hot topics, hot hot things that are being sold today. Okay? Three sections are there. Now, these three blocks can be loaded parallelly. And once the data comes, they will be rendered in a particular section. They do not to be loaded in a sequential way. Correct. So, say similar example. Let us apply here. We have three functions, three three promises, and we can avoid calling them sequentially, and we can call them parallelly. So, how to do that? This is my question. Okay. So, only if you know the concept of only if you know much about promise, you'll be able to answer. I, since I haven't explained that in any of my previous video, I'll explain that concept to you. But question you got. You have multiple promises, and you don't have to call them sequentially. Problem calling sequentially is this takes two seconds, this takes two seconds, this takes two seconds. You end up having six seconds. Okay. Rather, if you call all the three at once, they end up taking they start at same time, so they would take up around three seconds, two seconds, because each 
promise takes around 2 seconds so all everything called in a parallel way and they all end up taking 2 seconds each okay approximately not exactly each 2 second now what there is a way in uh, uh, there is a way in javascript how this can be achieved okay that is with a concept called promise uh, promise dot all okay it takes uh, it takes promise array as an input okay i'll explain you in detail after i type then i have three okay so what i'm trying to do here is rather calling each promise one by one i have a function called promise dot all and this will uh, execute and uh, it will take input as array of promises it will call all the promises and whatever the output that has come for 1 2 and 3 that will be passed to output and will show the output if there is an error it will go to the error block let us see what is output so output is 1 2 and 3 because all the promises got resolved so we got 1 2 and 3 as our output okay let's say if any promise fails third promise i am failing okay i am rejecting then what will happen is error is 3 so either promise dot all behavior is this either you get output of for all the promise or you don't get output for any promise so putting other way let's go back to the same website example where we have banner favorites or recommendations and the hot hot picks of the day so if any data is not there then don't show any other data like banner doesn't come then don't show below 2 this doesn't come then show don't show above and below so if that is your logic then promise dot all is a best suitable for you So there are a lot more things to read about promise dot all. You can read that here. I'll try to add this link also in the description. Method takes a iteratable promise as an input and returns single promise that results an array of results as an input uh, promises. It's uh, if I start explaining line by line here, it will become difficult for you to understand. But I've already explained the practical use case how you can use the promise dot all. Okay, but there is a scenario where I'm, go I'm going back where you don't have to wait for all the promises to be resolved. Okay, and there is a nice example is same the same website with three sections. What most website do is they don't uh, stop loading other two section if one section is not loaded. Correct. What they try to do is they try to show loader in a, that particular section, then maybe a retry option etc. And show the whatever the block that has been come. Correct. So in that case you don't have to do all. There is another function called all settled. Okay. So what all settled does is it will wait for each promise to be resolved. and whatever the value of each promise like whether promise is successful or a promise is rejected it will give that summary so if you see here so status this is the first promise so value 1 it got fulfilled this is the fulfilled value 2 third one is rejected reason is 3 so advantage of using this is uh, it doesn't wait for any promise to be completely resolved or rejected it will wait for i mean it doesn't wait for any promise to be resolved or rejected whatever happens it will it will take that value and store it and finally returns that as a array so now we know third one is rejected so you can have a logic to identify which promise got rejected then handle it separately okay that's how you can use promise dot all and promise dot all settled okay there are few more functions in prom inside promise so all we have discussed all settled we have discussed uh, reject resolve and then we have already discussed okay catch and finally also we have already discussed uh, and uh, there is something called any and race actually we haven't resolved promise catch and finally but they are quite similar or to whatever the try catch we are using and we have promise dot any and promise dot race these are something that i'm not asking because i haven't seen this asking i haven't seen anywhere in the recent interview uh, people asking this feel free to read they are very short topics if you are aware of uh, promise all and all settled they should be very straight forward for you to understand okay so that's all about this video uh, i Uh, i'll just scan through the entire promise section again there are few question that i have to ask you probably i'll try to do one more video to uh, summarize the different question about all all settled and i'll try to ask you in the my next video okay uh, if you like this video please do like it on my youtube channel don't forget to share this video with your friends they may also get benefited from this please subscribe to my channel and common geeks and i'll try to add my medium blogs where i've explained async await uh, and uh, promises in a very detailed way and that is one of my highest uh, read uh, medium article please you also read that i'll also link my Git github url where i have added all these um, question and answers you can you can also read uh, you can download that project and solve all the problems okay thank you again catch you in next video